Now, this multiple choice actually is one of my favorite as well as least favorite. The reasons you will see soon. First of all, you will see, let's see what happens in multiple choice. There will be three options given to you and there will be one statement or a question. Remember the three options. If it has more than three options, it is called matching. That will be a different question type which we have to discuss later. Now, difficulty level in this kind of question is definitely at a higher level. I mean, it's really difficult to this, to this question, but if it is in section three, okay? If it is in section one, then it's not that difficult. Same goes for section two. But when it comes to section three, things get hard, okay? Section one is where you have a conversation. Section two is where we have a monologue. Section three, again, conversation, plus the size or the length of the text in MCQ, that is multiple choice questions, increases tremendously. And that's the reason it is most difficult in section three. Yeah, so this can be particularly seen here. And my target is to make you clear this one. If you could do, or if you could clear these kind of questions, or you could write, find the right answer for section three, section one and two would be very easy. Same goes for section four. It's very similar to section three in case of multiple choice. All right. Now, let me tell you one thing, why it is difficult. The reason for it to be difficult is you have a lot to read as well as listen at the same time. What is the meaning of lot to read? Now, when we get multiple choice question, we have a question and some options, right? Now, these options sometimes are actually bigger than your question and hence you have to read almost like a passage. At the same time, you are listening stuff. How would it work out then? You know, you are reading stuff as well as listening and you have a lot to read and find an answer. On the top of it, our reading speed is horrible. You know, our reading speed goes to almost like 150 words per minute, which is really bad. We'll see how to solve this problem. For now, let me show you an example so that we can understand what will be there in this kind of question. By the way, in this case, I'm adding two examples. We'll see one why two examples. The first one is from section one. You can see the question nine and 10. Uh, I think you remember where I said section one has one to 10 is section one, 11 to 20 is section two, 21 uh, to 30 is section three and 31 to 40 is section four. And this one is nine and 10. And this is taken from IELTS.org just to show you what kind of question you will be getting. Let me play an audio where you can find answer for number nine and 10. All right, there we go. Okay, right. Now, obviously insurance is an important thing to consider and our companies are able to offer very good rates in a number of different all-inclusive packages. Uh, sorry, could you explain a bit more? <laughs> yes. Sorry. Um, there's really three rates according to quality of insurance cover. There's the highest comprehensive cover, which is premium rate. Then there's standard rate and then there's economy rate. That one will only cover the cost of the contents second hand. Oh, I've been stung before with economy insurance, so um, I'll go for the highest. Mm hmm. And... Can I just check, would you want home delivery or to a local depot or would you want to pick it up at the nearest port? The port would be fine. I've got transport that end. Fine. And will you be paying by credit card? Can I pay by check? And we are back. I hope you found an answer. One thing I would like to mention, okay, you don't have to write the answer as, let's say if the answer is economy, you don't have to write economy. You have to write A, the letter. That is A, B, C, these letters, okay? Good. So the answer for the first one is premium. For the second one is port. That is C and A. If you get it correct, wonderful. And I think you might have because this is section one. The easiest type. Let me take you the next question type, which is taken from section three, or in fact, section four, very similar. 35 and 36 are the questions. Now see what happens here. The length of the question or the statement is shorter than the options. 
Yeah, you can see in 35 and 36 both. Now, let me play the audio and see if you can catch it. Research shows that when these groups first come into contact with a Western diet, their health suffers. Once they're exposed to our diet of refined carbohydrates and sugars, they quickly develop our lifestyle-related diseases. However, that does not mean that the human digestive system is suited to digesting only a few sources of food, nor that it cannot change to accommodate different food sources. In fact, the evidence would suggest exactly the opposite. As a species, we are able to make significant modifications to our digestive systems according to what foods are available in our local environment. Examples abound, and our ability to digest lactose is a good one. Lactose is a sugar that is found in milk, and it is digested in the human gut by the enzyme lactase. In communities in Europe, the Middle East and Africa that traditionally herd cattle and drink cow's milk, this enzyme is present and people can digest milk products. However, in places such as China and Thailand, which do not have this style of farming, the enzyme is lacking and most people have lactose intolerance. Another example is the ability to digest the sugars from starchy foods. We are back. Time to get the answers. For the first one, it's C. We can adapt to a range of diets. And number 36 is B. In the past, they didn't farm cows. If you got these answers, wonderful. If not, don't worry. We have pointers coming. We have some things that can help you to get these answers easily. Yeah. What are these things called? I think we have discussed them. Pointers. These things are called pointers. These are tips that can help you. Now, the first one is speed reading. Earlier, I was discussing with you that normally our speed is 150 words per minute. True. If you are an avid reader, your speed might go to 300 or I mean 350 to 400 words per minute. That's tremendously good compared to 150. We all lie between this, so maybe 200 words per minute, which is not good enough for our MCQs or multiple choice questions. We have to reach anywhere between 350 to 400. The biggest reason, reason for us to um, not get the speed is our childhood. We never learn how to read quickly. Yeah, And there's a lot to read. There is always always a scope to read and learn how to read it. We never learn how to read. We just learned, oh, we have to read this way. We learned alphabet, we learned language, but never learn how to read. Because I think 80 to 90 percent were not even into books. You are into videos or games. So that's what happens. Let me change it today. Let me try to tell you or help you with the technique that can help you as well. This is a simple statement, right? Let's try to read it the way you read and the way we read before even applying the speed reading. This is a long sentence as we need to practice speed reading for IELTS listening. You see, what did I do or what, how did I read this one? I read it this way that I club most important information together. So this is a long sentence as we need to practice speed reading for IELTS listening. The things I have underlined are what generally what people combine together to form a phrase. That is, this is a long sentence as we need to practice speed reading for IELTS listening. Right. See how many breaks they are taking. One, two, three, four, five, six, almost six breaks. These breaks do take time. Right. Let me give you another example or make it better. Now look here. We'll try to go as fast as possible. Take half the number of the breaks. This is a long sentence. So we read this is a long sentence as we need to practice speed reading for us listening. We took this time only two breaks. Compared to the earlier ones, we are taking just really less number of breaks. This will increase your speed in reading. Secondly, our speed is limited to our speech. 
bright. So when I'm speaking it out, I cannot think while looking at it. So always in exam, please read in your mind or in your brain. Don't read it out loud or even don't just mutter it. Because first, it's going to disturb others. I've seen examples of that. Second thing is you will read it faster. Because in your brain, you can read it faster rather than reading it out loud. Okay, good. This is one technique that can help. You have to take some of the examples or let's say sentences and practice with them. And uh, speed reading comes from practice. It's not just a technique that I told you and you can get it done. Okay. Now, second information or second, let's say, pointer is concising the information. How to shorten the information? Because without shortening, it is going to be a little bit difficult, even with speed reading, right? Now, we have, this was the earlier question I've shown you in section three. This was from section three, remember? We have huge passage, I mean, huge question and huge uh, example. Let's just get rid of the instructions over here and also the Question number 35, I just want to take care of 36 here and see how we're going to concise this first statement that is Thai people have difficulty digesting milk because now this is the whole statement which we have in the question. How can we concise this? We only take important information. Thai difficulty digesting milk. Why? Maybe they have too much lactose in their body. We make it too lot lactose in bodies second in the past they didn't farm cows past no farm cows third the saliva lacks certain enzymes saliva lacks enzymes you see we try to fit as little words as possible and make sense of the passage i mean the question and the options now these are almost less than half of the words which you have seen in the question this is called concising the information in exam, you won't be definitely writing it again, but what you can do is just underline it. For example, Thai, difficulty, digesting, milk. Options, let's look at it. Instead of too much, you just write too much, or you can write lot, lactose, bodies. Past, didn't, cows. Saliva, certain, enzymes, done. Now see how many words there are, not many, right? This is how you concise the information. And when information is concised, you can read it, read it faster, process it faster, as well as listen the audio along with it. Moving ahead, we have another thing that we have to understand in multiple choice, because we have choice that is options, we have to understand that. If you can look at these questions, we have how many? Three options, it's always three options. This is the simple one, right? And look at these. Oh, they're they are huge, right? Too many options. Okay. First thing, remember, you don't ever have to write the full answer as the answer. You have to write either A, B or C. Okay. Second thing, I think I already told you how to concise the option. Last thing, which we didn't discuss in concise is if the option is too long and you don't have any time to concise, what you can do is skip it right? What is the meaning of skipping? Let me explain. <clears throat> so we have a question here and we're going to listen about this question rather than waiting for any option. Well, how they do is you might have already gone through the example. They're going to talk about this. They're going to talk about something about this or certain words. And they're going to also talk about number C. They try to distract you. If you're distracted, you're gonna choose the incorrect answer because you heard food or diet or unhealthy, any of these words. My suggestion is if the options are too long, if you can't concise, what you should do is just look for the answer rather than connecting with options. So research evidence suggests that now you look for and listen into the audio and listen about research evidence. That's it. What do they suggest? This is also important, the verb that is they're using, right? And then you keep searching what are they suggesting. When you find answer, just write in your notebook, oh, they're suggesting this. And then later combine or contrast with this. Same goes for the next question. Without reading the option, you have saved plenty of the time. And hence, you can listen to the next question easily. I mean, next part which you're in the audio and also read the next question. 
Some people just keep reading the options. It's not a good thing. Second thing about option is when you're given time, like for example, they say, oh, now you have 30 seconds to read question number 31 to 40. In this time, if you have options between these, I mean, multiple choice questions in between these, let's say 35 to 40 are multiple choice. Never read options in that time. Always read questions. That is number 35 is the question and you read it. 36 is the question you read it. You never read the options because you're not going to remember them, right? Your task is to just read the question, try to understand it. Next one, read the question, try to understand it. That's it. If the options are way too huge. If the options are okay sized, you can use the concise method and shorten them as possible. If the options are way too short, like we have seen previously, now if you look here, that options are too short. This is easy. You can connect with the audio. You don't need to skip the audio. I mean, the options, it's fairly easy. It comes in section one, right? But section three is a trouble. Yeah. Now proceeding is distractions, big, big trouble. If you look at this, the words, what they're going to use is they're going to talk about Thai people having difficulty digesting milk for sure. This is the main theme in the audio. But while discussing the options, what they're going to do is they're going to talk about too much lactose. They're going to talk about farm cows. They're going to talk about enzymes. Every word they're going to talk about. But in what sense? Well, in different sense. That means they might not talk about lactose in their body. They might talk about lactose somewhere else. They might not talk about farming cows in the past. So your task is to get the distraction in the side. And how can you do that? What I generally suggest or what I generally do is I listen for each statement. So we have a, an audio. One statement is over. Next statement starts. Then we have plenty of statements aligned, right? I always do one thing. I listen to one statement and check. Does it connect anyway? with this question that Thai people having difficulty digesting milk, nah, then I skip it, whatever. Next one, I listen to the next statement. I never jump to the option listening to one part of it or just one sentence. If it is connecting with the question, now I have to get attentive. Let's say this one has something about digesting milk, you know, and Thai people both. Oh, now I have to be paying attention maybe to this one and this one both then I can choose the answer easily. That's how you can remove the distractions. If this is not here in the second statement, you go to the third statement. In the audio, I think you can recognize when the statement has ended. They take a mini break that is like a full stop. Okay, these are some of the distractions and this is how you can reduce them. The last one, how to practice, very important. I've seen many people, you know, doing eight to nine or to even 10 tests in a row, like within a week or two weeks, and they still are scoring 24 to 26 out of 40 in listening. And they keep coming to me like, why is this happening? I tell them one thing, you have to ask yourself two questions. You have to recognize, first of all, what went wrong. You know, why did you not get the right answer? And... <clears throat> These two questions are, why did I not get the right answer? What was the reason at that time? And that you have to do as soon as you finish the test. Second question, why did I fall for the wrong answer? See, it's pretty simple, but it's so uh, elegant that it makes sense by itself. So why did I not get the right answer? And why did I fall for the wrong answer? If you know why, what was the reason for you? Oh, the distraction was the reason. Never you're going to fall for such distraction. If you know what the reason was because they have similar ideas, you're going to next time understand similar ideas. Right? So these two questions you should always answer as soon as you get your score or test done. So I today I practice listening and I get 34 out of, out of 40. I won't celebrate to get 34. Now I'm not saying you should, you should always be sad. I'm just saying why did I get the six deductions? The reason could be the solution. What if you keep getting 34 every time or 33 and in an exam, 
you get this six kind of questions this you you get six deduction right out of 40 so you get six right next time you got six what is these kind of 12 question asked in exam how much do you think you'll get you'll get 26 out of 40 that's so sad though you have practiced you didn't practice in a way so i hope you understand first of all understand where you went wrong second answer the two questions why did i get the wrong right answer and why did i not get the right answer and why did i fall for the wrong answer okay and that's how we're gonna we're gonna work on our multiple choice questions